Okay, so here we go. We're going to keep on exploring the different properties of exponents. So how do I simplify expressions with exponents that are negative or zero? Well, first let's talk about zero exponents. So any non-zero number raised to the zero power is always one. So here a is raised to the zero, so that's one. Three is raised to the zero, that's one. Now here, careful, x is raised to the zero power, so that's one. But this negative two is not, so it's brought down so we have negative 2 times 1, which is negative 2. Now here, what's being raised to the power of 0 is 2x. So this gets replaced with a 1. But there's a negative out in front. So that's a negative 1. Whereas here, the negative is inside the parentheses, so all of this, including the negative, is raised to the power of zero, so that's just one. Okay. Hey, let's play a little game here where we talk about the reciprocal of values r. So think back to what we've worked on with reciprocals. The reciprocal of four is one, ooh, that's supposed to be an arrow, is one fourth. The reciprocal of x squared is 1 over x squared. The reciprocal of a to the n is 1 over a to the n. Why I bring that up is our other idea that we're working with today is negative exponents. A negative exponent moves the base and the exponent to the opposite side of the reciprocal of the fraction. Now you might be wondering, well, we worked with reciprocals up here. I didn't see a fraction. Well, you could always call it 4 over 1 or x squared over 1, or a to the n over 1, if there is no fraction there. Now, when, once you move it, so the negative exponent makes you move it to the other side. Once you move it, that exponent becomes a positive. So, uh, and by the way, an expression that is in simplest form should always have positive exponents. So here, that is a negative exponent. That's a problem. So, we need to move it to the other side of the fraction bar. What fraction bar? That fraction bar. So now that becomes 4 to the power of 1. That's a positive 1 because the negative goes away now that I've moved it. Now if there's nothing on top, you put a 1. Here, a to the negative n needs to move to the other side of the fraction bar. And then once you move it, the exponent becomes positive. Nothing on top, put a 1. I shouldn't say nothing on top. There's one placeholder. Here we get 1 over x squared. Now here, it's the x to the fifth that has a negative, sorry, it's the x that has a negative exponent. So that's going to drop it down to the bottom or the other side, and it's going to be x to the fifth. This 3, if we had to put an exponent with it, would have an exponent of 1. It's not a negative exponent. We do not move the 3. The 3 stays on top. Boom. All right. Let's try applying these. So simplify the expressions. So here, just like we talked about, this x has a negative exponent, so it moves down and the exponent becomes positive. Of course, when it's a positive 1, we don't actually have to write it, so I'm just going to leave it as x. Now this 3 does not have an exponent, or the exponent is 1. It doesn't have a negative exponent. It's not going to move. It stays on top. Here, these two things don't have negative exponents, the 4 and the x squared. This does. So I'm going to kind of like, ew, keep my eye on this. I need to realize that this is going to have to move right here. This is going to have to go to the other side. Now once I move it to the other side, the exponent becomes positive. So on the bottom, now we have y to the, to the power of 3. So that's a positive exponent again. The 4x squared just stays right there. Here, both of these things, dios mio, need to move to the bottom. And when we move them, the exponents become positive. So there is a 1 on top. Here, this x to the negative fifth has to move. So it becomes x to the positive 5, but on the bottom, and the negative 3 and y squared stay on top. That's kind of fun. 
Ooh, here we have some fractions. So over here, I see a negative exponent. This guy right here has got to move to the bottom. But check it out. On the bottom, there's this guy that has a negative exponent. So it's going to have to move to the top. So the x to the negative 3 that's on top moves to the bottom. The z to the negative 4 has a negative exponent, so it needs to get reciprocal, so it needs to move to the top. Ooh, that's really fun. Now I'm going to try to keep things alphabetical. So on top, I have a y to the fifth and a z to the exponent now of a positive 4. On the bottom, I have x to the third. When I say alphabetical, when I see a y and a z on the same side, I put the y's first and the z second. If I had an A, I'd put that first out of the letters. It's a good habit to get into. All right, let's see here. On this one, I have a negative exponent. That's going to go to the, uh, the bottom. I have a negative exponent. That's going to go to the bottom. I have a negative exponent that's on the bottom right now, so it's going to go to the top. Whoa, lost my pen. It's going to go to the top. A little bit in a different color. It's going to go to the top. Woo! I'm marking this up so much I can't see where things are now, though. So on the top, I have an x to the third. I also have a, oops, I put that first. I have an x to the third, and then I have a z to the positive 3 on top. On the bottom, this a squared doesn't move. By the way, so... Alphabetically, we put, you know, we do things in alphabetical order. However, the coefficients, like this 2 to the 3rd, should go first. <coughs> Excuse me. And then this y to the 5th goes after the a. That's not the biggest thing. The biggest thing is, hey, are the numbers or the values, the terms that should be on the top and the top, and the ones on the bottom, should, is that correct? Top versus bottom is really the biggest focus not your alphabet schizzles. So let's see here. So it stayed on the top. These two went to the bottom. Check, check. Stayed on the bottom, went to the top. I think we're good there. By the way, if you wanted to call that the number eight, you could. That'd be cool. All right. So let's start to apply some properties that we've seen in the past. This is a sprinkle problem, if you will. So we get 2 to the negative 4, x to the, we have to multiply the exponents together, 2 times negative 4 is negative 8, and y to the negative 3 times negative 4 is positive 12. So that means these two guys right here are going to move down to the bottom. The y to the 12 is going to stay where, right where it is. So our final answer is y to the 12 divided by 2 to the positive exponent of 4 and x to the 8. So then we could call that, so that's a good answer. We call it 2 to the 4, 16, x to the 8. Let's try that again. Sprinkle, sprinkle, whoa. So we have x to the negative sixth times y to the negative ninth. So they both are going to move to the bottom. So on the bottom of the fraction bar, we have x to the sixth, y to the ninth, with a 1 on top. <coughs> Finally, an exponent of 0. Remember, do you remember? What something to be raised to the power of zero is? That's right, it's just a one. This whole thing right here, the three is being raised to the power of zero, that becomes a one. Five squared is 25. So really we get 25 times one, which is 25, a squared. All right, cool. Whoa. Sprinkle. Sprinkle. Sprinkle, sprinkle, 3 squared, a to the negative 4, b to the 6th, c to the negative 8. Move it to the bottom, move it to the bottom. So we have 3 squared times b to the 6th on top, 
a to the fourth, c to the eighth on the bottom. Boom. Ooh, I think these are the last two, aren't they? Here's where it gets fun. All right, sprinkle, 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 sprinkle. Four squared times a to the negative two times b to the negative four times c to the sixth. Sprinkle, 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 sprinkle. Now, by the way, between these two parentheses, that's multiplying. We don't see yeah. any operation, so it's multiplying. 2 to the negative 2, a to the negative 4, b to the negative 6, c to the positive 8. Oops, b to the negative 6. That's a key thing to try to work with. All righty, so let's see here. Negative exponent's going to go down. That's going to go down. This will go down. 2 to the negative 2. Go down, go down. <coughs> so, on top, whoa, that's a bad fraction bar. On top, we have 4 squared, c to the 6th, c to the 8th. This is all being multiplied. On the bottom, we have a squared, b to the 4th. Now, this 2 to the negative 2, again, it moves to the bottom, and the exponent becomes positive. Put that out in front a to the 4th, b to the 6th. Now, can we simplify this? Well, we've got 16 on top. 4 squared is 16. c to the 6th times c to the 8th. Do you remember what we do with these exponents? When we multiply the same bases together, we add the exponents. It's really 14 c's getting multiplied together, so that's c to the 14th. On the bottom, 2 squared is 4. See here, we have this a squared times a to the fourth. That's a to the sixth. Then this b to the fourth times b to the sixth. That's b to the tenth. Now, this is a good answer. The best answer will simplify these coefficients out in front. 16 divided by 4 is really just 4. And then our variables come along. Best answer. Most simplified. Last one. <coughs> Excuse me. They all got me sick. So we have a negative exponent. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Ooh, check this out. This sprinkles to the bottom. We haven't done much with fractions. We'll do a lot more with it tomorrow, but I think we can handle this. So we sprinkle that to each of the exponents. So we get a to the eighth, b to the negative twelfth c to the negative 4. So we got two negative exponents. This guy moves to the top. This guy moves to the bottom. Whoa, final answer. a to the 8th, c to the positive 4, divided by b to the positive 12. Final answer.